hello viewers in the last few videos we'll try to understand what is reflection how reflection takes place in case of lenses everything we understood in this class we'll try to understand the refraction through the glass lab in case of glass lab how the refraction going to takes place we'll try to understand see before understanding that first thing you need to know important thing is suppose any ray of light what is refraction it will take place from rarer medium to the denser medium okay you know that this is a normal which is perpendicular or imaginary line perpendicular to the surface what we call as a normal this is a contact this is a denser medium down and up is a rarer medium a rarer means don't think so much the number of particles are likely there in case of denser or more number of the particles are closely arranged so that what happen here intermolecular place is there so that light ray will go with a high speed okay in case of rarer medium it will go with a high speed in case of denser medium what happen because of more number of particles intermolecular place is less so that what happen it will reduces its speed okay it will reduces its speed when it is come rarer to denser okay that means when a ray is coming incident and the normal with angle incidence will take i when it is coming from rarer to denser what happen it will move towards the normal that means it is instead of going in this path it will bend towards the normal this is the normal right towards the normal it will bend meaning that the speed going to decreases so it appears to bend towards the normal similarly when a ray of light coming from denser medium to rarer medium imagine above glass is there something denser medium of a lip of stick a is the rarer so denser medium to rarer medium it will come that time suppose it's a normal instead of going see denser means more number of particles more traffic so less speed when it is come rarer medium what happens speed increases it will move away from the it will towards the normal and here it will away from the normal when it is moving from denser to rarer or rarer to denser this is what the taking place this is what the refraction okay but we call now bending of light when it is enter from one medium to another medium that one medium that we take optically denser and optically rarer okay when it is optically rarer and denser based on that the light ray going to bend or it will go away or towards the normal now let us see refraction through the rectangular glass lab this is what given in your book okay like rectangular glass lab means like this one slab we going to take okay children i uh, think you have rectangular geometry box no? like that one rectangular glass lab we taken in the rectangular glass lab what see here here to your thickness is there no this is the thickness of the glass lab imagine this will be act like a denser medium when it is ray in coming here incident and it will pass through this thickness and it will come out right so that means in this thickness it need to cover that means this area is a denser okay what is we consider no glass area that is a denser medium and here above is a air that is a rarer medium and below is also air that is also rarer medium so you are understood no air is a rarer you know gases how the gases molecules are very loosely arranged so intermolecular place is more speed is more okay speed is more in glass gas medium when it is come to glass medium what will happen in case of glass that is solid the intermolecular place is very very less they are closely arranged so that the speed going to decrease that means now see here air will be like a rarer medium and the glass will be like a denser medium so when a ray of light coming from rarer to denser what happen it will move towards the normal and same time it will move from glass to air what happen this is a normal when it is coming from glass to air it will move away from the normal this is what the two refractions going to takes place in the glass when it is entering one refraction when it is leaving one more refraction so that is what we call incident ray refracted ray and out is coming is emergent ray okay that the three rays we going to understand now the ray which is incidenting on the glass lab that is what we call incident ray so after passing no we need to pass inside that time when it is enter stop level that is incident surface when it is passes through the glass lab that is refracted ray we can say refracted ray and the ray which is coming out from the glass lab that is what we call emergent ray okay this is about the three rays what we are going to learn and see this line you are going to observe now this is actually we need to give the dotted line but you are given exactly so this dotted line indicates here suppose imagine if a glass lab is there the ray will go like this it will bend again it will come imagine no glass lab is not there how it will ray go ray will go like this because of glass lab it will going to deviate it this much okay 
if glass slab is there so much here to here it is deviated so that is what we call displacement instead of going this much the ray will go here so they will displace it from here to here okay the ray is displaced in the this much so this is the emergent ray okay okay glass slab now let us see angles the normal to the incident ray what we call angle of incidence and normal to the reflected ray this is what we call angle of reflection and angle between this normal again second normal to the emergent ray this is the emergent ray this is what we call emerging angle clear children the rays and the angles here we are going to consider incident ray reflect refracted ray and emergent ray and angles are incident angle refracting angle and emerging angle okay based on this angles and the based on this angles and this incident rays we are going to derive let us take let us take this much displacement is delta x small change in displacement instead of going this far it will go like this how much it going to displace that is what we call as a lateral shift laterally it is shifting no? so we call lateral shift so in the next uh, slide we are going to understand how to derive this lateral shift okay so picture Yes, children. Try to understand now. So this is imagine this is a glass slab. Now the this is a normal and this is also normal because for this surface contact surface this is a perpendicular and for this contact surface this is a perpendicular. So this we can take it as a normal. Now the ray which is incidenting on the slab on the top surface what we call angle of incidence and the ray which is see it is enter from rarer medium to denser. That means from air medium to the glass medium this is act like a rarer medium and this is a denser medium so when ray coming from rarer to denser what happen it will move towards the normal okay it will going to bend because speed decreases when it enter the glass so it will bends towards the normal it will bend towards the normal so what we call this angle this is what angle of refraction sorry just a minute not this one angle of refraction means angle between okay the ray going to bend like this okay so how much it going to bend no that we going to take it as from normal to the refracted ray okay this is a refractor that is what we call angle of refraction r we going to take and the ray which will go out from the mirror that is what we call this is where we call emergent ray and angle between normal to the emergent ray what we call angle of emergence e this is what we take so suppose imagine if there is no glass slab the ray will passes like this incident ray see this incident ray this is a direction of incident ray this is what is a virginal ray if a ray if a mirror in mirror sorry glass slab is not there the ray will passes like this so what we call how much it is displaced because of glass slab from here to here are it going to displaced let us take that distance as delta x okay that is delta x what we call as a lateral shift delta x what we call it is a lateral shift okay that we going to find actually in this derivation yeah try to find this lateral shift we need to find let us see the figure clearly let us mark some points for better derivation let us extend this o r you will take r is perpendicular let us take this is p and let us take this is okay in m value m you can take okay this is the values i'm going to take now you observe here two kinds of triangle one triangle right right angle triangle this is o m p you observe the triangle o m p is one right the right angle triangle okay here m is a 90 degree and similarly you can observe one more triangle what is there o r p where r is the right angle triangle so this two are the right angle triangle one triangle and this is the second right two triangles will observe so from this we are going to find this lateral shift see the first triangle this total angle is see children here to here it is r and here see up to how much it is there that much here it is also there so how can we write this one is i minus r we can write total angle is i in that r will go so what is the remaining angle this angle see this is i minus r angle so you know snell's law that is sine of okay sine what angle we need to find sine of i minus r 
is equals to c sine angle we're going to write opposite by hypotenuse right children see the triangle it is like this actually i'll write for you easily this is the angle we given that is i minus r and the hypotenuse is the op okay where op is the hypotenuse side and one side it let us take this is the m angle okay like this is there actually okay one angle that p no at the r o is either nothing but i minus r is there so sign opposite by hypotenuse and opposite how much is there this is delta x opposite is delta x hypotenuse is we don't know that is op okay this is what from the first triangle we write similarly also the second triangle it is like this okay second triangle is like this here let us take this is r okay this is r and somewhere you take a p or o whatever you observe this angle is how much this o angle is r and this is p this is r okay we need to find this one and you know the glass slab of thickness is t okay glass slab thickness is t so this distance is also t only right children this is also t that means the o r that is the distance is t now you will take a cos now because cos of r okay cos r is equals to adjacent by hypotenuse adjacent is t and hypotenuse is op so from this what we can write op is equals to t divided by cos of r so same thing this equation one you just substitute one in this one okay let us take this is equation two from two you going to substitute now what we will get sine of i minus r is equals to delta x in place of ot t by cos r so cos r will instead of writing down i'll write at the top cos of r so what you need to find your intention is to find delta x so delta x is equals to sine of i minus r take this cross multiply to here t will come here divided by so cos theta will come down so it is cos r so this is the lateral shift formula very important formula for your pu board also and for 10th standard also okay delta x is equals to t by cos r sine of i minus r if they provided angle of incidence okay you know that angle of refraction if you know i and r and you can be able to find if you know the thickness of the glass slab t using the three values you're going to find the lateral shift how much the ray will going to shift from if you place this much thickness okay if you place two centimeter or two millimeter thickness slab the shift will be this centimeter one centimeter two centimeter so like that practically we're going to find this lateral shift using this derivation and this is the formula thanks children for watching keep on watching like this